I was excited to do something a little different these next few weeks at Crossroads when Pastor Joe explained to me exactly what we were going to be doing. And the thing that struck me as odd, though, he said, we're going to give you guys three to ten minutes. That should sound funny coming from a Southern Baptist preacher. We're going to give you three to ten minutes to share. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to do my best, okay? The question that was given to me is, how do we actually know that we are praying to God? How do we actually know that we are praying to God? When I saw the questions in the back, I was hoping that's one of them that I wouldn't get. So that's the one I reached out for because I knew it would make me dig into my word even more. And we all have different tools that we use when preparing as, as preachers. Joe uses Google a lot. I don't know what Curtis uses. Um, but after, I'm pretty sure there's a consistency in all of our lives that we go to God first. But there's somebody else that I always go to. My son, my son is seven, but he always gives me jaw-dropping answers, and I don't know if this one's really jaw-dropping, so I said, Jordan, how do we know that we're actually praying to God? And he looks at me and he says, because we say, dear God first, <laughs> and, then he and then after that he says, duh, next question, please, <laughs> but uh, we're going to, we're going to. I guess I could just stop there. We're good to go. Just say, dear God, you're good to go. But we're going to dig into it a little more. How do we know that we're actually praying to God? This is how we know. If we're praying in faith, if we're praying in confidence, and lastly, if we're praying in truth, in truth, in faith, Hebrews eleven six, 6, the author writes, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he, that he rewards those who seek him. So without faith, listen, it is impossible for us to please our creator. It is impossible is what the scriptures are saying. So whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists, but it doesn't just stop at believing in the existence, Okay? We must know, we must, we must know that he is, he is Lord of our lives, okay? God will not just settle for the mere acknowledgement of his existence, okay? It's not what the scripture is saying. It's, as, it's seeking that which is from above. That's what, that's what faith is, is allowing him to change the desires of your heart through faith to accomplish his will for your lives, to accomplish his will for your lives. And he does that by changing the desires of your heart. If you're praying in this like manner, you can pray with a confidence that God hears you. And he rewards those who seek him in truth. And I'm gonna, I'll get into those rewards because those can get misconstrued at times as well, okay? So we know we're actually praying to God if we're praying in faith. And next, if we're praying in confidence, if we're praying in confidence, and the scripture Pastor Joe just, just came out, 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. It doesn't say that he answers us according to the way we ask, okay? If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, okay? Praying in accordance with God's will is a term and a concept that some may never grasp. Some people can't come to terms with what God's plan is for their life. You see, our prayers can be fueled by all the wrong reasons at times. They can be fueled by all the wrong reasons. Be honest with yourself. What is it that fuels those prayers? You'll know you're praying with God, praying to God, if you're praying for the desires that, that he has placed upon your heart versus making God into the genie in the bottle God. Exactly, Ethan. That's what I'm talking about. You know, God, give me that lottery. I'll give 10%. You know I will. Make me famous. I'll make your name great. I promise. The desires of your heart versus the genie in the bottle. <laughs> so we know we're praying to God if we're praying in a confidence 
of the gospel, not confidence in this world. A confidence in God sent his one and only son, fully man, fully God, born of a virgin. If we're praying with a confidence that he, that he took on the cross, that he was the propitiation, he was the atoning sacrifice for our sins, praying in a confidence that three days after he was crucified and died on the cross, that he rose from the dead and conquered the grave and ascended into heaven, praying with a confidence in the gospel, <laughs> praying with a confidence that God is who he says he is, and he will bring to pass what he says he will bring to pass. Clinging to the promises in the word of God and faith, praying in confidence. And lastly, we know we're actually praying to God if we're praying in truth. I wish I had an hour for this one, but I got about three minutes left, so I'll try. Psalm 145, 18, 19 says this. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord is near to all who call on him in truth. He is near to all who call on him in truth. You see, we have this preconceived notion that God does not hear us if he doesn't answer according to how we ask. God always answers. He always hears the cry of his children. It just not, may not be in the way that you want it answered. He always answers. The last two weeks of my life has been a whirlwind of emotions for my wife. Um... Seeing someone that you love laying in a hospital bed hurting is a hard thing to see. Scared, not knowing, not knowing what's going on, no answers. I can't imagine what's going on in her heart. You see, about six years ago, before I knew Christ, if I would have been married to Stacy, which she wouldn't have liked me too much then, I'm sure, I would have been shaking my hand at God. Heal her. Demanding of God. But <laughs> God's truth. My prayers haven't been for healing. See, that may sound odd to some of you. Our prayers have been simply for his presence in our lives during this. That, that when my wife is hurting, to just alleviate her pain so she can tolerate it. That when she's anxious, to engulf her with your presence and calm her heart. More importantly, God, keep us tied to you however you need to in your truth. And just give us the strength from this to this day to get through to the next. That's praying God's truth. That's not making God into someone that he's not. I'm not saying that God won't heal my wife. I'm saying his will be done. However he wants to get our attention, however he needs to keep us on our knees, that's what he's going to do. These are God's rewards. God's truths, God's promises, that when we're afraid, Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. The Lord God is with you wherever you go. These are God's truths. When you're struggling, Psalm 118, 5, out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. These are God's truths. These are his rewards. When you feel alone, Hebrews 13, 1, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Cling to God's truths. When your past haunts you, 1 John 5, you are an overcomer. 
When, it, when the end looks nowhere in sight, I sought the Lord. And he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Worship team, you can come back up now. So you know you're praying to God if you're praying in faith, in confidence that he is who he says that he is. And more, most importantly, if you're praying in truth, in truth, in God's truth. As they sing a song up here, Pastor Joe is going to be up here. And we try, we're attempting to answer as many questions as we can. And like I said, I might not be right. I'm probably not. Even still a Bible college student. Curtis might not be right. Pastor Joe is probably right, though. So he's got the doctor. He's the big wig here. But in this, in this time, if anybody has prayer requests for anything, anything at all, if you're struggling with a prayer life, if, if you're having trouble finding that desire, that hunger, that passion to seek God, God hears us. These are the promises that we can cling to in the Word of God. Is that whenever we need something in order to bring Him glory, He will give it to us. If it's His will. Whatever the case may be, if you're hurting, if there's a sin that you just can't shake, if you just need prayer for anything, me, Joe, Pastor Al's in the back, just latch on to somebody. Father God, we love you, and we praise you, Father, for what you're doing in our lives. Father, we thank you for, for drawing us close to you. Father, we thank you for this amazing line of communication you give us through prayer that no matter where we're at, Father, we can, we can fellowship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. That you hear our cries. That you answer our Father, help us, help us find rest, help us find strength in those requests in our life, Father. To you be every ounce of glory and every ounce of praise. We pray this in Jesus' name.